It's time to take a trip to France. France. Viva la France. How about the fromage? Yep, there you go. Yep. You have nailed the extent of your, your French knowledge. Sort of. We, <laughs> oui, uh, yes. We, oui, we. Oui. We, oui, oui. Like I said, I know Papillon the dog. Uh, yes, we're we're going to French for half a movie today. Yes. Because that's what we're talking about here today on this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen and Ladyum. Hello. This is episode 353. And it, of course, is time for us to head back to the wonderful world of the live-action adaptation of The Spoke Kishibe Rohan. Our boy Rohan's back. Yes, uh, we got a movie version of it this time, which is an adaptation of Rohan à Louvre, or Rohan Louvre. at the Louvre, the uh, one-shot manga that was made back in, I think, it said 2009? Yes. Wow. Which was it's also a part of like a whole collection of stories that are based around the Louvre. Mm-hmm. So it's like a whole thing in that, but yeah, this is uh, it's about Rohan going there and bad things happen. You mean bad things happen to Rohan sometimes? I know it's very surprising. Wow. Uh, this movie came out in May of this year, May twenty sixth, twenty twenty three, in Japan in theaters, and is also coming to theaters in various other locations such as Taiwan, Thailand, and Canada. Okay. And you can also watch it now streaming on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. which is how we watched it. Soon you'll get to watch it with ads. Yeah. They also have uh, the other three seasons up if you want to catch up and watch those episodes as well, which is very nice. Yeah, which if you haven't, you should because it's brilliant. 100%. For sure. And we got uh, a teaser of this in the last season. Yes, the last episode of the last season teased this in particular. We were like, ooh. And then ooh. like oh, like a week or so afterwards, they're like, hey, yeah, we're actually doing this. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the production of this film real quick, and then we'll dive into the film itself. Okay. Uh, filming ended in Japan in fall of 2022 and continued in Paris, France. The film was shot on location at the Louvre Museum, the Pont des Hortes, the Champ Elysee, the Arc de Triomphe de l'Étoile, and the Pont Alexandre III Bridge, and the, and the Place de Carrousel. It is unusual yep. for a film to be printed to be shot at the Louvre, and this is the second Japanese film to be shot there since All Round Appraiser Q, The Eyes of Mona Lisa, which was released in 2014. Huh. It's pretty wild to think. Uh, other filming locations include the Hotel Le, Le Touchier, a cafe situated on the Ile Saint-Louis, the, the Jardins de Trucadero in Paris, the town of Aizu Wakamatsu in Fukushima Prefecture, and the Hotel New Grand in Yokohama. Uh, Rohan's mm-hmm. grandmother's ryokan, at which Rohan meets Danase, is the Mukatake ryokan in the town of Aizu Wakamatsu. Oh. A lot of accents in that paragraph. Uh, yeah, many, many different <laughs> types. That was like a, a a crazy pendulum swing you had to do in the middle of that. It's true. <laughs> uh, the soundtrack was composed by Naruyoshi, nah, 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 Naruyoshi Kikuchi. Kikuchi specifies that the staff for the recording of the soundtrack has been tripled compared to the TV drama. The main theme has been reworked with claves being added to the original music, for instance. Percussion instruments were favored for the production of the soundtrack, including Javadis and Baladis Gamelins? What are those? Let's go to Wikipedia. But instruments such as Shamisen were also used. Uh, Gamelin. It's traditional ensemble music of the Javadis, Sundanese, and Balinese peoples of Indonesia, made up predominantly of percussive instruments. Huh. The most common instruments are the metello- metellophones, played by malas, and a set of hand-played drums called kendong, which register the beat. Hmm. So there you go. Learning something new there today. I did uh, not know that. Kento Nagao personally drew some of the sketches seen on on the young Rohan sketchbook, and the Japanese painter Fukui 
Oka, who specializes in Western style oil paintings, has created several works for the film, which I'm guessing are some of like the the paintings that uh, the old the old guy we see at the very end. Not the old mm-hmm. guy, but uh, Dizaimon was painting because he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm inspired by like these Western pieces of art." Right, right. So I'm guessing that's what those were. Makes sense. But yes. Uh, also, also, the when... soundtrack. There were a few times that it was just like, bung. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that was like the entire moment of the music there. I was like, oh, okay. That, that's all? Okay, cool. But I mean, it, it does work, especially because like, you know. Oh, no, it totally works. Something like this, you want to like keep up the tension and that is definitely ways to keep up the tension. Yeah, it absolutely works. So but yeah, there was funny. definitely some times it was like, bong. <laughs> <laughs> bong. Bong. Uh, in the box office... Uh, during its first week of release, the movie generated 314,736,080 yen in revenue. After a month, the movie had generated 1 billion yen in revenue with an estimated minimum of 720,000 viewers. Wow. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. I kind of didn't expect that for like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure spinoff movie. <laughs> yeah. Huh. But yeah, let's, let's dive into this here film. Okay. So we get a uh, we get old Rohan here just hanging oh, out. Oh Rohan. Um, I did reread this manga before going into this movie, so we'll talk about I think later on the differences between this and the original manga because there's definitely some parts of it that they added into this to you know pad out the length and everything because it is a you know short kind of one off story. Mm-hmm. Um. But for the most I part, didn't reread it. I forgot. Yeah, I think for the most part, the stuff that they took from the manga, they did pretty well. They adapted it, like, you know, fairly good. So mm-hmm. I think for what they did, it was, you know, worth it. And it all made sense at the end. But yes, uh, Rohan is hanging out. He has a vision of a woman. And he's like, huh, weird. Anyways, let's go to an antique shop <laughs> and try and find some, uh, some, some research into this painting I'm trying to find and then like the clerk is very weird and the the other clerk is like a big fan and basically Rohan learns that they are also kind of like not on the up and up yeah they're kind of they're kind of doing some counterfeit in here and there um Oops, at one dudes. point he like sees his art and he's like huh I don't remember signing that yeah hmm. but also I guess to be fair for him he could just be signing stuff and like also just be like, oh, well, I, I may have done that. Who knows? No, I mean like he literally signs a man's back in this yeah. movie. So <laughs> it's very funny. You know. uh, eventually, he uses heaven's door on these people to see exactly you know what they're doing and all that sort of stuff. Um, he tells the the clerks to be like, hey, respect your art, respect the art you're selling, including we- manga. Yeah, including manga, and also he doesn't call the cops on them because you know he's just like ah, that's too much, too much to deal with. Yeah, not dealing uh, with that. He finds this book that the younger dude had about an auction that's coming up, and there was a painting in it that's just black, and he's like, hmm, mm. interesting. Also, Ron says a cab a few times in this movie, not literally, but <laughs> figuratively. Figuratively, and I'm for yes. it. Uh. He gets ready for the auction where he meets up with Kyoka, hmm? who uh, basically got him in, into this auction. And they're basically, they have this fun conversation where they're like talking like, do you know you can just go to these for free and like no one's going to stop you? Like, I never thought of that. She's <laughs> like, like just rich people went there. Really swept up in the energy of yeah. it. <laughs> it's really funny. It's really good. Uh, also, he's like, she had, she'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, you gotta give like three autographs because like that's the only way we could get you in. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> she gives him the uh, the paddle for bidding, but she calls it the bidding pedal. He's like, it's it's a paddle, paddle. please, <laughs> please. She's doing her best. She's doing her best. Uh, he shows her the painting he wants. Uh, which is a piece a piece called Noir by a French artist named Maurice Legrand. And she's like, "What? Where's all the, like the the famous paintings in here?" He's like, "Well, you know, 
if that if those were they, if those were here, more people would be here. We would have learned about this a long time ago. She's like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> he also was like, hey, you should go home. And she's like, no, I want to I want to see the auction. <laughs> I'm doing a thing where I'm going to like do a diary about you. So we want to I want to hang out here and do the auction. <laughs> <laughs> um, They get into auctioning and then they get he gets into a bidding war with a dude. <laughs> yep. And the the price just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Like the the piece before that, uh, before they started bidding on this one was like ten thousand yen, I think, maybe at most. Mm-hmm. And eventually, the, the bidding war for this stops at one point five million yen. And Rohan's like, "All right, I guess I got this painting." Uh, they go back to Rohan's place, and Rohan has like all these weird like things just hanging out he's like yeah i'm trying to get into like pigments and stuff and all that sort of stuff just like learn and see if i can use this for manga and everything and just like learning about like all, all these ways you can get color pigments and all that sort of stuff and like he shows her a little bit of like you know you do this little thing and you get this color you do this you get this color and all that sort of stuff um and essentially he wanted this painting to see like the the black of it it's like because he'd heard about this legend about like you know the blackest uh painting ever and was like wondering if this was it but essentially he learns like you know this is not it right uh also some people try and like steal the painting from him it's the people from the auction it's the people from the auction and one of them ends up like getting it and then opening the back and there's nothing there and then he gets run over by a fake car there's also ooze seeping from the back of the painting oh uh, there is ooze Black you're right ooze yes um he does mention as well, though, that, like, this is not the exact painting he's looking for, but he thinks that it may be a key to the painting he's looking for, which is a painting by a, an artist named Nizaiman Yamamura, who was a painter from 250 years ago. Um, he also sees a little spooter going across the spooter. board. And, and then he sees a vision of a lady in black. I felt so bad this whole movie because you kept having to see all the spooters. And they were tiny. It wasn't like big spiders, so it was a little bit okay. I don't know. Also, one of them had a badonkadonk. They, a lot of them had a little badonkadonk. And also, yeah. I, reading the manga kind of prepped me for this. I was like, oh, right, there are bugs in this. Right, right. So it wasn't like a big, like, Ugh! But yeah, the the dude who steals it, like you said, he gets scared off by, like, he hears, like, a, a car coming and just runs off. Um, Rohan and Kyoka find the painting just on the ground they're like oh, that's weird and then they find on the back there's a message on it and the message is in france in french i almost said france and french together france <laughs> france <laughs> uh basically it just says this is the black scene at the louvre remorse mm-hmm. and then another dude was spying on them and runs away and they go back to the, rohan's place they're like this is weird this is a weird message what does this mean and then rohan's like we gotta go to paris <laughs> <laughs> We gotta go. Also, the one dude who ran away is found uh, fl- flattened like he got run over by a car in the forest. Yeah, like half of his head is smushed and mm-hmm. tread marked. Yes. Uh, and then Kyoka's like, I, yeah, I can't wait to go to Paris. Yay. Yay. And then we get a big reminiscing about Rohan and his youth. Youth. Where he was a young manga artist, you know. Trying to get into the business, he was moving. He moves in with his grandma at the, her inn, who basically runs this inn where she has all like these very strict rules. I don't know if they go into it in the in this movie or not, but in the manga, she has a very strict amount of rules, which is why basically no one lives there except for Rohan. Um, right. And it's perfect for him though because like you know it's quiet. He can work on his art, and you know he doesn't get disturbed or anything like that. But then one evening, there's a lady who comes in. And she decides she's going to start living here, which leads to some comedy of errors where Rohan accidentally walks in on her in, in the bath. And he's like, why does Grandma have these weird signs for the bath? Why is it these <laughs> old style hair styles instead of like men and women? <laughs> What's um, the deal with that? Also, his grandma wears those ridiculous glasses. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> and he wears them later. Yes. Which um, is great. Good callback. We learned that this lady is named Nanase, and then there's a scene where Rohan's just, like, hanging out in the garden, sketching, and he sees her, and he starts sketching her, and then she disappears, and he's like, where'd you go? And she's like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? You peeping on me? And he's like, you drawing me? And she look, looks at the sketchbook, and he freaks out. He's like, no, don't look at my sketchbook. 
and then she he eventually explains like hey like my editor was like yo your girls in your series are ugly you need cuter girls and he's like i just need to try and figure out how to draw women correctly at all but also like my editor is kind of like a crude dude so i don't know if i really need to listen to him but he also he's a professional so i should, probably should listen to him mm. and then nanase is like hey let me look at your work later and she invites him to his, her room and looks at his drawings and she's basically like look i'm not going to criticize your work or anything i know nothing about art but it's like i just want to look at your stuff you know um so she looks at this and everything and then eventually they uh, she talks about the the blackest painting in the world this painting with such a black that you can't see light reflect off it it's unseeable and it's the most evil painting ever created 250 years ago by Nizaman, Nizaman Yamamura. Mm -hmm. He found this per perfect pigment of black and was able to use it. It was from a sacred tree. And because he took it from the sacred tree, he was eventually murdered. Um, so she talks about all that and everything. She's like, hey, don't don't find this painting or anything. And then a spider's like, hello. And she's like, oh, get out of here. <laughs> That's fair, though. And then she leaves the inn and Rowan's like, well, that was weird. Uh, Rohan continues to work on everything and then eventually a while passes and she comes back um, they have this embrace and everything and he's like I will protect you also do I want to use heaven's door on this lady uh, no I no. will not um, she looks at Rohan's manuscript and finds this girl in it who's drawn in black black hair and everything she's like did you draw me why did you draw me? Ah, let me stab your manuscript with scissors. Ah, 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 ah. ah. I'm, I'm very sorry. I shouldn't have done this. By the way, I'm going to leave now. Yep. And Roland's like, that was also very weird. Anyways, Grandma, where'd this lady go? She's like, I don't know who, I don't remember us having anyone here named that. That's weird. Anyways. Anyway. Very um, normal behavior. Very normal. Uh, There's also supposed to be an antique dealer who's supposed to come and like get stuff from the storage that had gone missing and then during this part where he asked about Anase, there's a radio bulletin that talks about this dude being found dead in a junkyard where he supposedly had drowned but there's no water in the area so that's very weird mm -hmm. and then he goes and finds this painting and Rohan goes and finds this painting that's in storage and gives it to the buyer who was you know going to buy it anyways and then he guys like you're old mom out of here and then Rohan just, just like goes on with his dude. life yeah he's just a dude So uh, that's that's Rohan's past. Now it's time to go to Paris. Uh, we kick things off in Paris in the uh, the Louvre Cultural Medi Medi Mediation Department. There we go, that's the word. Where we get the the I guess the head of that Jacques Blanc, very French name. <laughs> he has his uh, co-worker Emma Naguchi. She's gonna serve as like you know the tour guide, the interpreter for Rohan and Kyoka. Um. This dude's like, eh, you should, uh, you, you sure you could do this and everything? She's like, no, I'm fine. I can do this. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Rohan had, and before they came to, to Paris and everything, sent over like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. He was looking for information about the painting he got from Maurice Legrand and also for the painting from Nizaiman Yamamura. Uh, we see Rohan and Kyoka on a bus tour through Paris with Rohan's in his tiny little glasses. <laughs> His tiny grandma glasses. <laughs> and Kyoka's having a fun time. And this old lady's like, hey, do you know where the champs de is? is? And Rowan's like, well, yes, it's over here. And he speaks it all in fluent French. And Kyoka's like, whoa. <laughs> he also speaks French. <laughs> whoa. Uh, they eventually meet up with Emma. And Kyoka's like, wow. Look at all this Paris stuff. It's so cool. I've always wanted to come to Paris. You're like a real Paris girl. Look at this kid. She looks like a real Paris girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're like and then was like do you want to go to the hotel first and Rowan's like nah let's go to the museum and, and then Kyoko's <laughs> uh, luggage just disappears for the rest yes. of the movie uh, at the courtyard before the Louvre mm -hmm. uh, Kyoka asked Emma to take a picture of her in front of the giant like pyramid I think it was I think so uh, and then they go they try to they try to head into the museum and there's these two dudes who are like, Whoa, that's Rohan! Whoa And Rohan's like, Why are you guys dressed like skaters and punks when you're coming to you a place of art? You should dress better And then they're also like wanting autographs, but he still gets some autographs and one of them he draws on the back of the dude's jacket. Yep. 
Uh, we get to see the inside of the Louvre, which has, you know, it's very, very flashy. He's got, like, you know, pieces of artwork in the ceiling and all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, it's very, very fancy. You're going to see a lot of artwork here. They see the Mona Lisa. Ron hangs out by the Mona Lisa after she mm -hmm. says that uh, he looks like the Mona Lisa at one point. Which is funny because they, uh, they that is a that is a line from the manga. However, it is said by Okoyasu is dead. Oh, really? Because he hangs out with the boys before he heads to Paris. Right. I remember that he hung, he hung out with the boys at one point. Yeah, and like he says that to him there, and Ron's like, "Excuse me." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he sees a dude just like. Painting, painting another painting and he's like can you you could do that here and they're like yeah you can do that it's fine you know we are focused on art and culture and everything so we will allow people to come in and like you know paint paintings but it's not like you can go and like you know resell these or anything like it's just you know for fun or if you want to like try and get better and all that sort of stuff um, and there are strict rules behind it yes that is true and they also mentioned or she also mentions like oh this Maurice Legrand that you were talking about is also a dude who specialized in reproduction of art and everything uh -huh. And they're like, oh, that's, hmm. hmm. Maybe he saw the black painting and was trying to do that. But apparently there's no Japanese paintings in the Louvre, so that's weird. Maybe it's in storage or something. Um, we learned that the Louvre has been moving its storage items into a new storage center to protect it from flooding. Um, which I guess during this whole thing, they rediscovered about like a thousand pieces of art from the 20th century. And over 100 Eastern artworks, so they're like, well, maybe it, it was in all that or something like that. Uh, we get this other dude who comes in whose name is Ryonosuke Tatsumi, and he's apparently a researcher who was supposed to handle all of the Eastern artworks that they found during this whole thing. He talks mm -hmm. to Rohan, he's like, oh, I'm a big fan. And he's like, oh, you've read my stuff? No, I've seen the cover. <laughs> yep. And Rohan's like, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, and you mentioned that two of these actors are from Battle Royale, which is funny. Yeah, so this dude is, he's one of, like, the, so, like, he's one of, like, the older uh, kids who comes back and plays Battle Royale again, I think, is what he's, he is supposed to be. Um, if you look up this dude and, like, look him up on IMDb, there's a picture of his character in Battle Royale, and immediately you'll probably be like, oh, of course, this guy. Um, and then I think the lady who plays Emma was also in Battle Royale, but she was, like, just probably, like, one of the young characters within the the movie. Um, she's also in, I think she was in the series that I watched on Netflix. That's about the Hikaru Tada songs. It was like a drama really? based around those songs. Yeah. I think she's in that as well. So that, that was like, I recognized her from that. I didn't know that existed. Yeah. Um, hmm. so yeah, two battle royale people in this, which is alums. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, so, so they, funny. they take a walk through the Louvre and Tatsumi basically talks about how he was, you know, very well acquainted with Maurice Legrand. You know, he was very good at reproducing reproducing art before he f mysteriously died. And they hear just some random dude shouting, and it is Jacques Blanc. He's very scared and running for help. And just screaming. Yeah, and he just falls down a bal balcony. Uh, and then before he just, like, passes out and dies, he, made it, he whispers the word spider and black hair. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess he doesn't mm -hmm. die. He's alive. He's fine. Apparently. Yeah, he's he's alive. He just is Sorry. pretty pretty broken. Other people will die though. <laughs> Other people will die. He's just not one of them. Mm -hmm. He 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 landed terribly on the stairs, but he's he's fine. Yeah. Ish. Uh Rohan and Kyoka go I think to like a cafe to talk about the incident. Mm -hmm. Like, well that was weird and everything. And Kyoka's like, what, did, what about the, the painting and everything? Like, you know, it's got those weird, like, spider web images in it. Like, maybe talking about that. And then Rohan brings up the, the line that was on the back of the painting. And they kind of, like, come to to think, like, maybe we mis misinterpreted this. And maybe he saw something remorseful at the Louvre. Um, also, like, we talked about, like, this blonde guy was look, looking up the information for Rohan and everything. And... Apparently he stumbled upon the name of Nizaman Yamamura and was going out to find that, and that's that's what he was doing when eventually he's found, you know, going into the spiel and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, they go back to the Louvre at night, and then Emma's like, "Hey, we found potentially where this painting is. It's in Warehouse Z13. It's under the museum, but also that's weird because this this storage 
place that we're you know supposed to be in has been abandoned for 20 years so like nothing's supposed to be in there at all and it's kind of kind of gross yes uh but they're like hey maybe this dude saw something there and Rowan's like well let's go down there and check uh they meet up with uh, tatsumi again who who brought some firefighters with him which is just two dudes two guys we got white dude and we have vin diesel at home <laughs> so that and i couldn't stop laughing <laughs> it's very good I mean, you're not wrong. That's who it is. He just we have Vin Diesel at home, but yeah, God, it's funny. So yeah, there are there the obviously the lure workers are there to like you know take them down there, but the firefighters are there to you know take care of any artwork that may be in danger in case something happens down there. Mm-hmm. Also, they can't uh, bring like phones or pens or anything or anything that could damage the artwork. So they're like you know get rid of all that stuff. They have a lantern though. They do have a lantern. Uh, as they're going down there, Emma gets a message from one of her colleagues that Blanc had heard of Nizaimon from Gasho Bigot, the former curator of the Louvre who worked here apparently 20, 20 years ago, but he just mysteriously disappeared. Hmm. Um, Rohan sees a picture of this dude and immediately recognizes him as the dude he gave the, uh, gave a painting to in the flashback sequence. Yep. The white guy. Yes, and he's like, oh, that, hmm, uh oh. Hmm. So they, they keep going down and diving forward, diving down into the depths. They eventually find their way into the storeroom where they have to break open the lock. And then they find a painting down there. And Rohan's me like, oh, this is a Vermeer. And Emma's like, that's weird. Why would that be here? Why didn't it get moved or anything? Uh, Kyoko's like, well, maybe it's like a fake or something. And Tatsumi's like, oh, yes, of course it's a fake. Get rid of this painting. And Rohan's like, Yo, dog, this is a real painting. What are you doing? <laughs> are you that bad at your job? Like, what are you talking about? Uh, Emma's like, well, what, what would have went to the stories instead? And Rowan's like, look at the way this paint, the, the, there's a paintbrush here as well that, you know, has an engraving on it with Maurice Legrand's name. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. And Tatsumi's like, well, that's impossible. No, you can't have that. That would have been ridiculous. And Rowan's like, well, what if this dude was down here in this abandoned storage facility, you know, forging artworks this whole time and no one was none the wiser? Or maybe it was a whole operation that allowed him to be down here. Hmm. Hmm. So he, he just he devises this whole plot of the, like, you know, there's this whole uh, art forgery thing. And basically they would... Um, they would uh, take these uh, reproductions of the art where he would reproduce them, take them overseas, and basically if you bought one of these pieces for cheap, in the back of the, the piece you would get the original the original piece of art, and that's how you would be smuggling these pieces of art you know, into other places and everything for people to get. Mm-hmm. Yoka and Emma are like, ah, that seems a little bit ridiculous. Like, who could do this? But Rohan's like, what if you had inside help from the museum? Maybe some firefighters maybe a curator and he points his flashlight at the firefighters and tatsumi he's like oh, maybe you <laughs> and rohan's like also by the way i never trust this dude because like he's obviously not a fan of my work <laughs> and he's like he was just following me around real closely it's real weird and then one of the firefighters just like starts screaming and yelling is like why are there soldiers here what's going on uh, uh, uh. and then he just falls down and then they go to check on him and he's like just full of bullet Riddled holes with bullets. and everyone's like what is happening and they're like what did you do Rohan and Rohan's like I did nothing here that was not me uh, basically the Tatsubi's found out through this and all that um and they're like, well, did you come here to like take care of us because of this art ring? Like, no, I just wanted the black painting. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know uh, about any of this before I yeah, got that's, here. That's that's just on y'all. Yep. Uh Tatsumi does say that he's that uh Maurice did see something down here that drove him mad. And then there's a, a dark shape at the end of the storage that like starts moving around. Mm-hmm. Uh Tatsumi eventually starts yelling out for Maurice and starts to struggle against an attacker who's strangling him, but no one can see it. Uh, Rohan remembers the advice of the evil painting and get, tells Kyoka to get out of here. Um, 
Emma gets under the spell of the painting and she calls out to her dead son and is like, I'm sorry, I couldn't save you from drowning. And then, like, she starts vomiting up water and gets soaked in mm-hmm. it. Um, he throws his jacket over her and then, like, takes, he's like, take her out of here. She's yes. got to go. Uh, Tatsubi expresses regret at using Legrand as he's dying. Uh, the firefighter sees someone approaching and recognizes it as his grandfather who died in a fire. Yep. And then Rohan realizes that the, the painting basically reflects your past sins. And then this other firefighter gets caught on fire, just basically engulfs, gets engulfed in Fireball. flames out of nowhere. Um, and it's all due to the black painting. That like now has a lady like showing in it with yes. her hair all over the place. Uh, Rohan basically imagines that Maurice Legrand was tormented by you know the forgeries and everything and he paints this paints a copy of the black painting under remorse it drives him mad and then that basically forces him to die as he's interrogated by Tatsumi and the the uh, the firefighters mm-hmm. and then Rohan's attacked by the, the painting Nah. Because his hands are all turning black and inked, and he's like, "Oh, this is real bad. This is real bad." He sees, he see, he looks at the painting for the first time, and he sees essentially what looks like the Nase, but very spooky like. And mm-hmm. then a dude with an axe starts coming in with long hair, and he, Rohan, is, assumes that this is Niz- Nizaimon who rushes at him, and he has to like fight him off. Uh, he tries to use Heaven's door on him, but obviously he can't do anything because this dude's dead. So like all the pages are just black and everything. So there's nothing he can do there. Uh, he's about to get hit with the axe and then Nanase's spirit comes and holds him back and she's like, hey, you need to forget everything and basically Rohan remembers this as the last thing that she had said to him was mm-hmm. forget everything and he uses Heaven's Door on himself and basically writes to erase his memories and that is a, that's how he's able to get out of there and basically like, he just forgets everything, stumbles out and like, well, this is all weird and before he had done that as well, he wrote on his hand to rub uh, the command off of his face so he could regain mm-hmm. his memories. Um, so he he gets out of the out of the the underground area. The fire basically destroys the black painting, meaning that it will be gone for good. Um, Kyoka got Emma out of the the Louvre. She's trying to like you know. Comfort her. Comfort her, because she's like, yo, that was all messed up and everything, but, like, look, hey, you know, maybe your kid just wanted to see you and everything, so it's fine. Like, hey, look, 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 here's my dad. My dad came to Paris, you know, uh, you know, he was a world traveler and everything. He took, he took this picture in front of the, the Louvre and everything. That's why I wanted to reproduce it and everything. And it was real nice. We got to, I feel like I'm, like, close to him now, because we, I was able to do this. It's a nice moment for her. It is a very um, nice moment for her. Uh, we get to see Kyoka and Rohan then afterwards just chit chat, I think in a cafe again, about everything. They're like, yeah, apparently uh, gas build up, hallucinations and everything. Yep. <laughs> and Rohan's like, yep, that clearly, you know, hallucinations can cause weird things to happen. Mm-hmm. And Kyoka's like, you know, you can see all the artwork in the Lord for free online? That's wild. You know, <laughs> You know, the the power of the internet means, like, nothing's ever going to get forgotten that way. And then Rohan talks about this painting by Monet that was, like, found recently in 2016 at the Lure, which was, you know, never listed anywhere. And he's like, maybe this is a place that people can't handle. Like, maybe, uh, I don't know about this place. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kyoko's just like, you know, that, pa- that lady in the painting, though, like, she was real beautiful looking. And Rohan's like, you, you saw, saw the painting? And she's like, yeah. It was real nice looking. And he's like, sometimes you surprise me, Kyoka. And she's like, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> is that good or bad? And then they head back to Japan. Um, so Rohan heads back to Japan. He finds this little tiny grave next to a tree. And nanase spirit shows back up and she apologizes to rohan for getting him involved in this plan but she was like she was trying to stop the painting and everything and you know stop it from doing bad things and all that sort of stuff um he finally uses heaven's door on her at this time 
and he basically learns about her whole backstory and everything. And this is where we get a huge backstory about Nanase and Nizamon, or Nizamon, where you know they were a couple. They were married together. Nizamon was the heir of the Yamamura clan, which is a very famous clan of painters. You know, obviously, you know, like he was he's a painter, his dad was a painter, his grandfather was a painter, all that sort of stuff. Um but he eventually gets kind of cast out of the clan because um he was doing art in a way that his father wasn't accepting of, so he kind of has to go off and do his own thing. And, Western art. Yeah, and he he basically has to like, you know, do his own go his own path, essentially. He goes from having the old Japanese hairstyle to growing out his hair. It's true. Um, bald at one point eventually he kind of gets like obsessed with this idea of like he wants to paint this picture of Nanase but he can't find the perfect black pigment to showcase her hair hair. and also she's sick right she eventually falls ill and like he doesn't have the money to help her so he has to go back to his father and be like hey can you help me and his father's like all right I will help you on one condition you bring me a painting that surpasses any painting I've ever done um so this kind of like furthers his obsession to do this, and like eventually she finds this like black sap coming out of the sacred tree, and is like, "Hey, look at this! Does this pigment work for you?" And he's like, "Oh my god, this is it! This is what I've always wanted!" And she eventually starts collecting it and collecting it, and then eventually he's like, "Oh, I got it! I'll do this! It's fine!" And he starts doing it, but like his brother reports them to the magistrate because he's like, his brother's supposed to take over, and he's like, "Ah, I don't like you." And then these people come to arrest him. And he's like, well, I was just getting the sap from the tree. I wasn't doing anything bad to it. But, like, they're like, we don't it was care. It naturally leaking. Yeah. You were messing with the tree. You can't do that. That's illegal. Uh, during this whole thing, then Asa comes out. I was like, no, it was, it was me. It was all me. Don't, it was not him. And, she, and then the, the officers, like, beat her up. And she dies because she was weakened from her illness. Mm-hmm. And Nizaman basically just goes berserk murders the dude who did this and then essentially just becomes overcome with rage and grief and sadness and all that sort of stuff and chops down the sacred tree gets all the 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 sap from it and finally uh, completes his painting and as he does he dies next to Mm Nanase and then as that as it happens the the painting oozes spiders and everything they absorb his his anger his grudge and they curse the painting and then that's how it became the most evil painting ever Mm -hmm. um we head back to the present and Inase is basically like yeah you know I wanted to stop this sorry Rohan like you know it's my bad he's like yeah it's no big deal don't worry about it it's whatever hanging out with you was very important to me in my younger life and then also he uh, he mentions before she or she disappears, and then he mentions as well like Nase originally before she had married uh, Nizaimon, her maiden name was Kashibe, mm-hmm. which is why she, she's an ans- she, that makes her an ancestor, and that's why she was tied to the painting to him, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. We then go back to Rohan's office. He's doing his his stretches for the day. His finger stretches. Yep. And then Kyoko runs in and is like, I got some new pigment stuff for you. Wait, where's all your pigment stuff? And Rowan's like, oh, I changed my mind. I don't think the I don't think manga's ready for this yet. <laughs> and he's like, what? Me- <laughs> Kyoko's just like, oh. And then she finds a sketch of uh, Nanase that he'd been working on beforehand. And he's like, oh. And then Rowan's like, all right, time to get out. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> She's like, No. <laughs> And then, like, because she'd brought him, like, these um, roasted newts. And then mm-hmm. he, like, he <laughs> throws her out and then opens the door. He's, like, gives them back. He's, like, they're not supposed to be roasted like this. And then shuts the door on her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's, like, mm, well, that jerk. Anyways, someone named this research diary Rohan at the Louvre. Yay. And then he goes back to his finger stretching. And then he gets, there's a random noise he hears. And he looks into the alcove and like he finds the uh, the manuscript that he had shown to Nase all those years ago but it's intact not cut with scissors nah it's perfectly fine he's like hmm interesting hmm. all right back to my warm-up <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's how we end this uh, this film the the dog 
is there but is not actually there. Yeah. <laughs> I like in the uh the credits for this it shows Joaquin, actor, none, heard only. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. It's pretty good. That's really good. Uh do you want to hear some manga film differences? I would love to hear that. We got a lot of them. Uh, they removed Rohan mentioning the meaning of the kanji in his name, which in the very beginning of the manga, it's Rohan basically introducing himself and like, here's what the here's what my name means essentially. Which for this you really don't need. Right. Uh, removed Rohan's narration to the readers in the beginning, instead adding a scene of Rohan dreaming about Nanase. Uh, added a scene of Rohan seeing a black spider in his room after the dream. Added a scene of Rohan visiting an antique shop to research about the clerks who were selling counterfeits. Rohan sees a catalog of an ant auction with the painting drawn entirely in black. Uh, replaced Josuke Higashikita, Okuyasu Nijimura, Koichi Hirose, and Kyoka. Or replaced them with Kyoka. Kyoka says Rohan looks like the Mona Lisa rather than Okuyasu. Which is what you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, added a scene of Rohan and Kyoka at the hotel before produce- participating in the auction for the painting. Uh, Nizam- Nizaman Yamamura's painting is not named Under the Moon in the film and is only referred to as the Black Painting. Added a painter called Maurice Legrand who saw Nizaman's Black Painting and painted his own imitation called Noir. Added an auction scene where Rohan and Kyoko compete against Watabe and Kawaii. Or Kawaii, not Kawaii. <laughs> this man's not cute. <laughs> He's cute. Kawaii. He's cute. <laughs> winning the painting in the end. Uh, added Rohan's house being messy because he was researching various ancient pigments wanting to use them for his manga. Added Watabe and Kawaii attempting to steal Noir from Rohan's house. Added Rohan's grandmother getting rid of and selling most of her possessions as if she was preparing for her death. Uh, changed Nanase's appearance at the end. Or at the end, Rohan's grandmother seemingly does not know that she exists, implying that only Rohan saw her ghost. Removed the conversation where his grandmother tells him about her and added a scene where Rohan asks about her, but she doesn't know. Uh, removed the story of Nanase getting divorced soon. Her Fujikara last name is not mentioned. So in the manga, she's basically like someone who is about to get divorced. That's why she comes to the end to stay there because, like, you know, she's on the outs with her husband and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, changed the location but, of the. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say you mentioned that to me when we were watching this. Yes. Uh, changed the location of the black painting. Instead of a landowner from Nanase's hometown finding it in his barn and then selling it to a curator in the Louvre, it is in Rohan's grandmother's storehouse. However, Nanase's ghost mentions to Rohan that it is in the Louvre before it gets there. Uh, removed Nanase getting a phone call when kicking Rohan out of her room. They see a black spider instead when Nanase tells him to leave. Removed Rohan seeing Nanase run away from the end while presumably talking to her husband on the phone. Instead, he hears her footsteps leaving. Uh, added an antique dealer named Yoshio Kabadore, who was killed by the black painting when he was supposed to arrange the storehouse of Rohan's grandmother. Added Rohan's grandmother listening to the radio with Kai Harada on the news. Replaced, replaced the Louvre curator who retrieved the black painting with Gosher. Gosher was killed at the time after tra- at, the, at that time after transporting the painting to the Louvre. Added Kyoka traveling to France with Rohan when she takes lots of photos to make a travelogue for Rohan. Added a surname for Gosher, Bigot, a first name for Naguchi, Emma, and full names for the firefighters, Nicholas Thomas and Hugo Renard. Uh, added a scene with Emma before she meets with Rohan. She is absent-minded at work due to Pierre's death. Added Jacques Blanc at Emma's, as Emma's boss and Marie as her co-worker. Jacques reminds her of her meeting with Rohan. Replaced Gosha's manga role with Ryonosuke Tatsumi as the curator who goes to Z13 with Rohan and the others. Added a scene of Jacques re- witnessing the black painting and jumping off the second, fla- second floor railing. Added Kyoka going to Z13 with Rohan. Changed the firefighters to be criminals working in a theft group with Watabe, Kawai, and Maurice Legrand. Ryonosuke Tatsumi is their leader. Uh, Change Z13's door lock being stuck to openly opening easily with the keys of the firefighters. Added a scene of Nicholas kicking off kicking off a painting from the wall, which is an unpublished painting from Johan Vermeer. This makes Rohan and him suspicious since it should have been sent to the Louvre's newly constructed storage center already. Added an argument between Rohan and Tatsumi after Rohan collectively, correctly theorizes about their theft group. Change the order of the firefighters' death. Nicholas is killed first by a soldier rather than Hugo's sudden death. Added Hugo becoming violent and suspecting Rohan and the others after Nicholas dies. Added Tatsumi being strug- strangled by an illusion of Maurice's ghost unlike how Gosher was killed by a car. Changed Emma being killed by drowning. She starts drowning, but Rohan saves her by putting his coat on top of her so she can no longer see the painting and then has Kyoka escort her out of the building. Added Hugo lighting himself on fire due to his grandfather's actions in the past. Removed Rohan seeing the illusion of his grandmother and grandfather's ghosts. Changed the samurai that Rohan uses Heaven's Door on to be Nizaimon instead. Nizaimon attacks Rohan with his axe. 
Change the Nase saying forgive me to her telling him forget everything. Remove the painting have a th having a thorough scientific examination before being burned. It's implied that it, that it burned due to the fire from Hugo's lighter. Added Kyoka consoling Emma and showing the photo of her father in front of the Louvre Pyramid who passed away when Kyoka was young. Added the paramedics claiming that they hallucinated because of the gas ac accumulation in the warehouse. Added Kyoka and Rohan discussing the incident at a cafe where Rohan is shocked that Kyoka did not see any hall hallucinations from the painting. Expanded upon Nizaman and Nanase's backstory. The Yamamura family served as official painters, but Nizaman was disowned after his marriage with Nase for painting in other styles for commoners. They moved to a corner in the temple where Nizaman would sell his paintings to merchants. Uh, changed Nizaman being the only one to be aware of the Plague Pigment's existence. Nanase discovers it first until Nizaman follows her. Added Nizaman having a brother named Sama, Samanosuke Yamamura who reports him to the magistrate's office for collecting the black sap. Changed Nizaman being executed for chopping down the tree. He is punished for merely touching it. Added Nanase attempting to stop the officials but the attacker. Uh, added Nizaman murdering the officials with the axe before chopping down the tree. Added Nizaman dying alongside Nanase after his final painting. Added Rohan reading the ghost of Nanase's memories with Heaven's Door before she says her final goodbyes. And finally, added Kyoka visiting Rohan's house back in Japan. He decides not to draw with the ancient pigments anymore. Rohan's next story is a full-color manuscript of Pink Dark Boy inspired by what he saw at the Louvre. Kyoka titles the travelogue as Rohan Kishibe goes to the Louvre. Nice. That was a lot of changes. A lot of it, I think, is more just like, you know, stuff. That adding that, Kyoka. Added that and like, you know, the backstory stuff and the extended stuff in the beginning so like a lot of like that sort of stuff and kind of changing around uh the the stuff in the the where or the little storage area right and it's all the people there die and like the whole thing is like oh it's a mystery how all these four people are just missing real weird anyways Whoa. i'm surprised nobody's like hmm i wonder if any of these people were killed by the people who were down there with them nah who can say Real mystery. Yes. Stinky. <laughs> this man got shot by gas. <laughs> Ooh. It was a fun movie, though. I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I hope we get more of this. I really hope so as well. Like, they haven't said anything because usually um, the episodes come out in, like, December. And right. this obviously came out in, like, earlier this year, so... Nothing really has been said, but I uh, I do hope they do more because, like like you said, they, it's real fun and like there's still stuff that they can do for sure in this. Mm -hmm. um, I would be so down for sure. Do you want to hear some production comments from the actors and director and all them so folk? Please. Uh, this is of course starting off with Issei Takahashi, the uh, the actor who plays Rohan. It has now been three years since I was given the chance to play the character of Rohan Kashibe. Whether it be in a drama or in a movie, every time I'm allowed to play Rohan Kashibe is an extremely special event in my life. As I write this comment for the reveal, I'm currently on site in Paris. Ever since the first season of the drama, I have an, had an incredible Japanese team around me working hard to bring Rohan Kashibe to life. In addition to the Japanese filming crew here, we have been joined for the past few days by a local French team so professional and sincere that it feels like we've worked together on all three seasons. I'm truly witnessing the creation of a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. During the filming of the first season, I spoke to director Kazutaka about adapting Rohan at the Louvre, only seeing it as a pipe dream. I said to him then, someday I hope we can actually start shooting in Paris. And now, actually standing on the paved streets of Paris, I don't feel the slightest bit uncomfortable being Rohan, which I believe is due to the outstanding staff of work supporting me. From the bottom of my heart, I am truly grateful that despite being in a foreign country, nothing about playing Rohan has changed. The Japanese part of the work, which was produced in parallel with the third season of the drama, plays just as important of a role of, as the French part we are shooting right now. Topics such as bloodline, inheritance, and the past in the past play key roles in any work related to JoJo, and those topics will be explored in this work as well as well. One must inevitably face those things in order to exist in the present, and the time can be both and time can be both kind and cruel to everyone. Rohan is no exception. In this work he must too interrogate his own existence. This work is conceptually part of the live action Dust Spoke Kishibe Rohan drama, and the story functions as its ninth episode. If you follow the drama series so far, you'll naturally enjoy the movie, but I think people who don't know anything about what Rohan's been up to in his own in his own series will enjoy it too. I hope everyone who comes to the theater will enjoy this very unique work. Nice. Uh, this is from Marie Ito Itoyo, who is obviously Kyoka. The third season of the Dust Spoke Kishibe Rohan drama has just finished airing. To tell us true, if we've been working on filming this movie the whole time. Just as I mentioned in one of my lines in the last episode of the drama, Rohan Sensei finally goes to the Louvre. And as his editor, I'll be going to Paris with them. <laughs> I'd like to express my <laughs> heartfelt gratitude toward the wonderful team that has always supported us, but also toward the new staff members who have joined us this time 
This time around, allowed us to perform in this wonderful new environment. Once we began shooting with the local staff team in, in France, I managed to overcome the language barrier between us and savor the excitement of helping bring a project of this skill to life. It's going to be an unforgettable experience, trust me. It makes me so happy that another new episode is being added to this work, which everyone's been looking forward to for a long time. Rowan Sensei and Kyoka face the mysteries hidden within this, the distant Louvre Museum, along with the pass itself. I hope you all enjoy this work just as much as the last one. Uh, this is from Minami, who plays Emma. When I was a child, I used to steal my older brother's manga. Alone and scared, I would read the world of Hirohiko Araki. I would awake with a jolt whenever those images appeared in my dreams. Time passed, and one day I found Rohan at the Louvre at, the, at a local bookstore. I picked up the book, and despite my apprehension, began turning his pages. Before long, I was drawn into the profoundly mysterious story and became captivated by it. Every detail of the work felt inspired, and it was at that moment I knew I had become an adult. And now I am playing a part in this story. I still can't believe it. The costumes and sets truly do reflect Rohan's world. I had such a delightful time on the set, and I could feel the trust that Mr. Takahashi, Ms. Itoyo, Mr. Watanabe, and the staff around them had built up over the years. It was really an exciting experience. I eagerly await the day when this beautiful, mysterious story, so distinct from the manga, will play out before your eyes. Uh, this is from Kazutaka Watanabe, the director. The city of Paris seen in the movie The Conformist is decadent and dismal. It is not a city of flowers where people celebrate life, but rather a dark city filled with the stench of death and perversion. Ever since the product project started three years ago, the visuals, artistic scenery, and costume design of Thus Spoke Kashibe Rohan have taken heavy inspiration from that movie. When I visited Paris to begin shooting, I found a beautiful but cold world draped in with thick and heavy clouds on the verge of falling, where the freezing cold rain kept pouring down, just like in The Conformist. And now Rohan Kashibe is standing there. It's an odd feeling, a mix of deja vu and exhilaration, but there's not a hint of sentimentality. Rohan is supposed to be there, and there he is. Filming begins as usual. <laughs> uh, and this is from the screenwriter Yasuko Kobayashi. Uh, when I first heard that Despo Kashibe Rohan was going to be made into a live-action series, I didn't have the slightest clue that it would also become a movie. Also, as the series went on, we selected the original work to be adapted. At the Louvre was never included in our list of candidates. A two-piece story that, un that unrealistic is now being brought to life. This is one of the rare stories that focuses on Rohan himself. By all means, I hope you enjoyed it at the theater. So there you go. I enjoyed it from my couch. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Love to enjoy After I got an injection. Couch. A lethal dose of vaccine. I mean, it wasn't lethal. I'm not dead. <laughs> I don't think. Am I dead? I don't know. Who's to say? I have a heart rate, so I think that's a good sign. Potentially. <laughs> uh, they also put out a picture album. Oh, really? From this film, which features concept art, interviews, and behind-the-scenes look at the film's production. That sounds cool as Yeah. It's in a, presented in a luxurious hardcover format. Ooh. Luxurious. Luxurious. It's well, very yeah. French. <laughs> Baguette. Baguette. But yeah, that is uh, Rohan at the Louvre, the live action adaptations film adaptation of the manga. Uh, I continue. I guess there's also a, a novelization of this of this film that they made as well. <laughs> What, really? Yeah, that's pretty wild. Huh. And interesting. So they went sure. they did the full works for this, I guess. Why not? Why not? That's fun. But yeah, it was a fun movie. I'm glad that they finally were able to put it out. You know, we we talked about hoping that they would eventually do this when we had talked about the live action series for, mm -hmm. you know, those handful of episodes we talked for the first three seasons and hopefully they're able to make more of this because there's still there's still more content that they can make from the manga the short stories or like you know what like they did with the previous season just put something from diamond is unbreakable in there why not yeah why not i mean it's so good i would keep watching this and i, I was very happy that they they put this up um on prime so we could watch it yeah that was nice we had like official subtitles and stuffs not that I am opposed to the versions we have had before, but it is nice seeing it on my big TV. And also, my eyes it's, are bad. it makes it easier for more people to watch it as well. That too, yeah. Like, I'm really, really hoping that more people actually will 
will watch these now that they're accessible. Mm-hmm. Because they're good. They are very good. A plus would recommend y'all should watch it. All of it. Every single one of them. 100%. And then do your finger stretches. Yes. But yeah. Hopefully uh, we see more of this. They announced more of this at some point. That would be very nice. That would be very nice. They should uh, They should do that. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that's uh, that's going to do it for us this week. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SEC.cool. where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at AnimeCheckup. And you can follow us on Blue Sky at SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com. And you can buy our books, One Shining Moment, A Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, Hot Tubs, and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a whole wealth of bonus content as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week, we'll talk about something. I think this is next week, our first episode of October. It is. It is. October's here. Spooky month is, is upon us. It's the spooky month. And we'll figure out something to talk about. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. 